Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope your day is going great. I'm having fun because I'm in a Topaz Studio and Topaz Adjust AI, and that's what this video will be about. It's about um, how I like to use Topaz Studio as the center of my Topaz experience, if you will. Um, and then I use Topaz Adjust as a plugin to uh, Topaz Studio. So let's hop into that. And here we go. I have a photo that I took in uh, a little town called Tucumcari, New Mexico. It's along Route 66. This is one of the classic locations, the Blue Swallow Motel. It's gorgeous, uh, in my opinion. I love this kind of stuff. Neon, old cars, kind of vintage looking stuff with some cool signs. Uh, and I shot it at Blue Hour. So what I wanna do, I've made no adjustments here in studio. I wanna pop over to Adjust AI. So you just go up to the plugins menu and you can see that you have Adjust AI there, assuming you own the product. And then you give that a moment and it'll, as it says, invoke the plugin, drops the photo over to Adjust AI. And here we are, we're now in Topaz Adjust AI. As you can see, I need to update my license from the beta copy to the license copy. Um, I'm gonna do that. Regardless, the product's the same. So um, I did a video recently when this product launched about Topaz Adjust AI. I'll put a link up there. I'm not going into detail about all the different uh, things you can do here. I'm really over here for one thing, and that is I wanna use this auto adjust AI um, module, and I wanna go for HDR style. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And that's because to me, this scene kind of screams HDR. I did shoot brackets, but this is a single exposure. Uh, it's the center exposure from a set of brackets. But as you'll see in a moment, it does take a moment for this to calculate. It's doing a lot to the photo. It also is a raw file, so it's fairly large. But there you go. So I can show you the original and the current state. And if you want to see that on a split screen, you can see that there. So I think the photo is vastly improved. It's definitely uh, getting there. Uh, I'm not done with it. What I'm going to do is make a couple of adjustments here in Adjust AI. And I'm going to add a little bit of contrast and maybe take down the highlights a little bit, maybe make it a little bit cooler temperature wise. I don't want too much orange. I don't want to like overdo it. And right now it's a little bit orange um, and there's not an HSL filter or tool here in uh, Topaz Adjust AI. So one more time, there's the original, there's the current state and that was mostly done by one click, HDR style, which is an uh, AI powered module here in Topaz Adjust AI. So. I'm happy with the current state. I'm gonna hit apply, and it's gonna add those updates to this photo and stick it back in studio. And here we are, we're back in studio. Now keep in mind, those uh, changes have been baked into the photo. Now, um, it's not gonna overwrite, like it is non-destructive, right? I'm using a copy of my photo, but um, the original and the, and the current state are the same because what I did in adjust, comes back on top of the photo. So you don't have a layer that you can remove if you don't like it, for example. Um, but now I wanna make some adjustments and that's where I think the power of studio comes in. I like to pop over to adjust to get that kick and then I come into studio to do some refinement. So let me do that. First, I've gotta look at my notes. First thing I did is add a basic adjustment. Let me clarify something. I've got some videos about studio. I'll put a link up there. Um, but these adjustments, I believe there's 10 of them here above this little gray line. These uh, adjustments above the line are free and included in Topaz Studio, which is a free download. And I'll put a link down below along with a link to Topaz Adjust AI. Um, down below this line, all of these, which is another uh, you know 20 years, I don't know, I don't know what the number is offhand, but these are all what they call the pro adjustments or pro filters and you have to purchase those. Either they sell some of them in packs or groups uh, or individually, but regardless, you can find that all on the link down below. So I'm gonna start with this free adjustment, which is the basic adjustment, and I gotta look at my notes to see what I did. Um, I'm gonna start with a little bit of clarity, something like that. Clarity is kinda like edge contrast. It gives it a little bit of definition, a little bit of pop. I'm gonna take the shadows down, so something about like that. I'm gonna take the highlights down, something about like that. I'm gonna bump up the saturation, because, you know, it's a neon and it's blue hour. It just kind of says, hey, Jim, saturate me. Um, and I'm gonna take the temperature a little bit down as well. And excuse me, that's kind of the, the blue that I'm uh, trying to accentuate. So let me show you the before and the after. Not a really big ch uh, change. It is a basic adjustment. I just did some kind of minor tweaks. The next thing I'm gonna do, this is one of my favorite filters. 
in Topaz Studio, and this is a pro adjustment. So you go down here below, and these are alphabetical, and it's called Quad Tone. Now, uh, you've probably heard me, if you've watched any of my videos, I talk about split toning a lot. I use it in Topaz Studio. Um, let me tell you where it is. It's up here, they call it dual tone, but it's split toning. It basically allows you to separate the highlights from the shadows and make color adjustments in each. I do that in Lightroom. I do that in Luminar. I've do, done that in uh, Aurora HDR. Um, I've got videos about it uh, in some of those products. Anyway, I love split toning, which is dual toning here. But they have this really cool tool in Topaz Studio called Quad Tone. So it has highlights and shadows, which you can see here, but it also has blacks and whites. So you can make color adjustments across all four of those instead of just two. So like it goes to 11. Uh, it's just a little bit more powerful, a little bit more uh, color uh, impact you can have on the photo. So I'm gonna do that. Um, and these are actually the default settings that show up. Um, I don't know, I don't recall ever setting those. I don't know that you can. So I think those are the default settings that just are, are built into the quad tone filter. But I gotta be honest, I really like these four. Uh, they work well on my photos. So I'm just gonna go strength of about 40 or so. 41, okay, I had 41 on my notes, so that looks good. Let me show you the before. You can see it was a little bit bluer and a bit more orange around the lobby and the office over there in this, uh, you know, kind of behind the car in the, in the building itself. And when I go like this, it kind of tones that down a little bit, makes it a little bit more blue, so I'm liking that. Um, I like that look and I like that particular filter and I, I like those settings, I use it a lot. Um, so I'm not done, I'm gonna go in HSL now. Again, HSL color tuning, also a pro filter or pro adjustment. I'm gonna go into orange and all I'm gonna do is bump that saturation up a little bit because I did kind of lose some of that on the, uh, the last edit I did or the last filter, which was the quad tone. I lost a little bit of that emphasis in orange. So I'm gonna bring some of that back because I, I want the orange to stand out. I just don't want it to dominate. And I felt like it was gonna dominate if I wasn't careful. So. That's something I do a lot, like the quad tone kind of took that away, which I like some of it, and I'm kind of bringing it back with HSL. So I talk about this a lot. There's a delicate dance kind of between some of these filters in terms of getting your colors just right. In other words, experiment, have fun, end up with what you like. Um, I'm also gonna go into the blue. One of the other cool things, as you can see, as I hover over the color, you get these this crosshatch kind of pattern on your photo that shows you where that color is. So when I was on orange, it was all around the lobby, right? When I'm over here in the blue, it's mostly in the sky. Super helpful because that's basically telling you, hey Jim, when you make edits to the blue and you've got hue, saturation, and lightness, or luminance, that's the brightness value of this color, um, when you make those edits, Jim, to that blue, these are the parts of the photo that are gonna be affected. So it's a great visual aid and I love that. I wish, I wish that was like that in, in every uh, product, but it ain't. So, okay, hue, I'm gonna bump the hue a little bit this way. So just kind of getting into that a little bit different shade of blue. I'm gonna add uh, a bit of saturation as well. And then I'm gonna take the lightness or luminosity, also just known as the exposure value, and take that down. So I'm really, I'm creating basically a darker, richer blue that's creating more of a nighttime look. Let me show you how this looks. Let me just, um, HSL color tuning, there it is before I've added the filter, right? So a bit brighter. It was shot early blue hour, not, not real close to the, uh, you know, the end of blue hour and the start of evening. It was shot early blue hour, as you can kind of tell. Uh, but I'm making it look a bit more like later in blue hour. Plus, I just like the rich, dark blue, so another reason I did that. Um, that's that for that filter. So I can just, uh, this little arrow here allows you to expand or collapse the filter that you're on. So there we go. Did I hit something accidentally? No, no, I think we're good. Okay, I thought I, I messed up one of my filters. Okay, I'm gonna use one more and this is Precision Contrast. Also a pro filter. As you can see, I use these pro filters a lot because they're very powerful. And all I'm doing here is in the medium contrast. Let me back up. The photo hasn't had any contrast really added yet. It's a little bit flat and lacking contrast, especially here in the uh, lower half of the photo. The car and the building, I, they just look kind of flat to me. So when something looks flat, I generally go to contrast first. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go to about, uh, you know, about 50 or something like that. So there's 49. Let me close, collapse this filter. Now, uh, this little eyeball allows you to turn it on or off. So that's currently on. There it is off. If you look, especially the lower part of the photo, 
it looks less contrasty, a little faded, a little washed out. Again, working with the raw file, a um, bit more contrast. I think it looks a bit better. And that's really the whole workflow. So I'm going to show you the original. Keep in mind, this is the original post the round trip over to Adjust AI. So that's what it looked like after I left Adjust AI, added that HDR AI module and a slight contrast and shadow and highlight adjustment and I think a temperature adjustment. So anyway, minor adjustments um, on, on the sliders, but a big adjustment in terms of using the uh, HDR AI look that's built into Topaz Adjust AI. Anyway, that's what it looked like after Adjust AI. And with some more refinements here in studio, with a uh, one uh, free filter and three of the pro filters, I was able to really customize the photo and make it look the way I wanted it to look. And that's it, my friends. Uh, so that's a before and after. That's it was gonna be quick, and these are never quick. Um, but that is a workflow of how I'm using Topaz Adjust AI as a plugin to Topaz Studio. I'm having a lot of fun with both. Great products work really well together, super well integrated. And that's it for today, my friends. I appreciate you watching. I'll be back really soon with more videos and more stuff to talk about. So like, share, subscribe, um, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and I'll see you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care. Adios.